Welcome, dear viewers, to a captivating story that transcends time and societal norms, a tale of love, war, and self-discovery. In this poignant narrative, we delve into the extraordinary life of Antoinette de Colbert, a courageous individual who defied societal expectations and found her true self amidst the chaos of war. Set against the backdrop of World War I, Antoinette's journey begins as Antoine, a young man thrust into the trenches of battle. Faced with the horrors of war and the pressing need to escape, Antoine takes a daring leap into a world entirely different from his own, a world where he embraces the identity of a woman named Antoinette. As Antoinette, she discovers a newfound sense of peace and freedom. She embraces the delicate touch of lace and satin, the elegance of dresses and petticoats, and the acceptance she receives from her dear friend Colette. However, the weight of her secret becomes both a burden and a source of wonderment as she navigates through the complexities of her dual existence. As Antoinette immerses herself in her new identity, she finds love, friendship, and a sense of belonging in Parisian society. But just as she begins to build a life filled with joy and acceptance, fate has other plans in store. Love blossoms, and yet it proves to be a love that may never be fulfilled. Through the trials and triumphs of her life as a woman, Antoinette's resilience shines through. She becomes an advocate for gender equality and finds her voice as a writer, sharing her experiences to inspire others to embrace their authentic selves fearlessly. Now let's start the story. In the weeks that followed, I found myself drawn to Mademoiselle Colette de Mallarmes and her chateau. Despite the chaos of war surrounding us, the chateau offered a respite from the trenches and the incessant violence. Mademoiselle had a way of making me feel at ease, and her warm demeanor contrasted sharply with Lieutenant Carruthers' coldness. I continued my duties as an interpreter between Mademoiselle and the soldiers, and over time, I learned more about her life and her aspirations. She was passionate about helping the troops, and was dedicated to providing them with comfort and support. The soldiers loved her, and many of them preferred to speak to her directly, relying on my translation only when necessary. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself spending more and more time at the chateau. Mademoiselle and I became friends, and I felt a connection with her that I had never experienced with anyone else before. She was a strong and independent woman, not defined by societal norms, and she valued my presence and opinions. One evening, as we sat in the chateau's garden under the stars, Mademoiselle asked me about my true feelings regarding the war. She could sense that I didn't belong among the soldiers, and she wanted to understand my perspective. I hesitated at first, but her gentle encouragement eventually led me to open up about my struggles, my aversion to violence, and my yearning for a different life. Mademoiselle listened attentively, her eyes filled with empathy. She confessed that she too had always felt confined by societal expectations. As a woman, she was not allowed to pursue her dreams fully, and she felt trapped in the role of a caretaker for her family's estate. We bonded over our shared desire for freedom, and I felt a deep sense of understanding between us. As the war raged on, our friendship blossomed into something more profound. We spent long hours together, sharing stories and dreams, and I found myself falling in love with her. It was a love that transcended societal norms and boundaries. We both knew that such feelings were not allowed or accepted, but we couldn't deny the strength of our emotions. One fateful night, as we were walking through the chateau's halls, Mademoiselle took my hand and looked into my eyes. There was an unspoken understanding between us, and without saying a word, we kissed. It was a moment of pure vulnerability and passion, a moment that changed everything. From that point on, we knew we had to be careful. Our love was a secret, hidden from the prying eyes of the soldiers and the world outside. We stole precious moments together, cherishing each second we could be near one another. But as much as we tried to protect our love, fate had other plans. One evening, as I returned to the trenches, I found myself caught in a fierce battle. The chaos and the violence seemed to consume everything around me. In the midst of the madness, I was struck by an explosion, and everything went dark. When I woke up, I was disoriented and in immense pain. The medics informed me that I had suffered severe injuries and had been unconscious for several days. As I tried to make sense of what had happened, I noticed a strange sensation in my body. To my astonishment, I discovered that I was no longer Anthony Harris, the young soldier, but Antoinette Harris, a woman. 
It was as if the explosion had caused a bizarre transformation, a gender swap that I could hardly comprehend. As I struggled to come to terms with this unexpected change, Mademoiselle Colette rushed to my side. Her eyes were filled with concern and love, and she assured me that she would stay with me and help me through this bewildering time. I was both overwhelmed and grateful for her support. Together, we navigated the challenges of my newfound femininity, all while trying to keep our love a secret from the world. Mademoiselle's caring and understanding nature made the transition easier, and I found solace in her company. However, as time passed, it became clear that hiding the truth would become increasingly difficult. People noticed the change, and rumors started circulating among the soldiers and the villagers. Fearing for Mademoiselle's safety and reputation, I decided it was time for me to leave. With a heavy heart, I said goodbye to Mademoiselle Colette and the Chateau, unsure of what the future held for me. I journeyed to a nearby town, where I hoped to find answers about my unexpected transformation. There, I met a kind doctor who explained that such instances were rare but not entirely unheard of. The explosion must have triggered a unique reaction in my body, leading to the gender swap. As I tried to adapt to my new life as Antoinette, I couldn't help but feel the weight of loss. I missed the camaraderie of the soldiers, the familiar routines of army life, and most of all, I missed Mademoiselle. The void left by her absence was immense, and I knew I had to find a way back to her. Determined to reunite with the woman I loved, I mustered the courage to return to the chateau. When I saw Mademoiselle again, her eyes widened with surprise and joy. She embraced me, not as Anthony or Antoinette, but simply as the person she loved. Mademoiselle's unconditional acceptance of my transformation filled me with hope and happiness. We vowed to face the world together, come what may. As the war finally came to an end, we decided to leave the village and build a new life elsewhere, far from the judgmental eyes of society. Our love story defied conventions and transcended boundaries. It was a tale of resilience, acceptance, and courage, proving that true love knows no limits. And so, hand in hand, we embarked on a journey of love and adventure, embracing our new identities and a future filled with endless possibilities. As the years passed, our story became a whispered legend among the villagers. The Chateau of Egli St. Martin became a symbol of love's triumph over adversity, a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome even the most extraordinary challenges. And so, this is the story of how I, Anthony Harris, once an ordinary soldier, found love, and in the face of war and transformation, became Antoinette Harris, the woman I was always meant to be. Together with Mademoiselle Colette, we defied expectations and embraced our true selves, living a life of love and authenticity, forever changing the course of our destinies. The return to the front brought with it a harsh reality, the vivid contrast between the peaceful haven of Chateau Malarmes and the brutal, unrelenting horrors of war. As I trudged through the mud and endured the ceaseless bombardment, Colette's words haunted me. The image of myself as a woman lingered in my mind, offering an escape from the constant fear and violence. The days and nights in the trenches became more grueling, and the weight of my internal struggle grew heavier. I felt torn between societal expectations and my own desires. How could I entertain such thoughts of becoming a woman when my duty as a soldier demanded my loyalty and bravery? One evening, during a brief lull in the fighting, I found myself sitting alone in the darkness, contemplating my identity and future. The explosions in the distance seemed distant and irrelevant, and I allowed myself to confront the truth buried within me. Deep down, I knew that the woman I imagined myself to be was not a mere fantasy, but a part of who I was. As days turned into weeks, my introspection intensified. I began to question why I had always felt like an outsider among my fellow soldiers. It wasn't just my lack of interest in the war or the camaraderie, it was something deeper, something I had suppressed for so long. One day, while I was on a brief respite, I decided to confide in my closest friend in the regiment, Corporal Thompson. I trusted him enough to share my innermost thoughts and fears, unsure of how he would react. As I, as I nervously revealed my feelings, I was surprised by Thompson's reaction. Instead of ridicule or judgment, he listened with genuine understanding. He admitted that he too had never felt like a typical soldier, and the war had merely magnified that feeling. We bonded over our shared experiences of not fitting into the mold that society had shaped for us. Thompson encouraged me to explore my feelings further, 
and consider the possibility of a different path. While it was a terrifying notion, the idea of living authentically as myself, whether as Anthony or Antoinette, became increasingly appealing. Together, we devised a plan for me to escape the horrors of war and embark on a journey of self-discovery. With Thompson's support, I managed to obtain a forged passport and identification papers, thanks to connections he had established through the black market. He also secured a safe route for me to escape from the front, away from the battlefield that had become my personal hell. On a moonless night while my fellow soldiers slept, I said my silent goodbyes and slipped away from the trenches. Thompson covered for my absence, allowing me the chance to start anew. In the darkness, I made my way through the treacherous terrain, guided only by the stars and my determination to find my true self. My heart raced with both fear and hope, unsure of what the future held but knowing that it couldn't be worse than the life I was leaving behind. Finally, after a harrowing journey, I reached safety. I found myself in a small town, far away from the war, where I could begin the process of embracing my true identity. I had decided to embrace the possibility of becoming Antoinette fully. The town offered me a chance to start anew, away from the judging eyes of society and the horrors of war. I, I secured a job as a shop assistant, using my fluency in French to my advantage. The townsfolk accepted me as a stranger with no knowledge of my past, and I embraced the opportunity to build a new life. As I settled into my new identity as Antoinette, I found myself feeling a sense of freedom and happiness I had never experienced before. My days were no longer consumed by the relentless grind of war, and I no longer had to pretend to be someone I was not. Over time, I connected with a group of progressive-minded individuals who welcomed me for who I was. They taught me about gender identity and acceptance, guiding me through the process of fully embracing my true self. While I still thought of Colette and the love we shared, I knew that our worlds were too far apart, and I had to let go of the past to find my own happiness. I began to immerse myself in literature and art, finding comfort in the expressive power of these creative mediums. As months turned into years, I grew into my identity as Antoinette, feeling more at peace with myself than I ever had as Anthony. My life had taken a new trajectory, and I embraced it wholeheartedly. Eventually, my path led me to the bustling city of Paris, where I discovered a community of people who shared similar experiences and welcomed me with open arms. Among them was an artist named Marie, who became my closest friend and confidant. Together, we navigated the complexities of our identities and found solace in each other's understanding. Our bond was forged in the fires of adversity, and we celebrated the freedom of living life authentically. In the years that followed, I carved out a niche for myself as a writer, sharing my journey and experiences in the hope of inspiring others to embrace their true selves. My story resonated with many, touching hearts and opening minds. Though the war continued to rage on, I remained distant from its horrors, focusing instead on the power of acceptance and love. My journey had taken me from the trenches of war to the trenches of self-discovery, and I emerged as a stronger, more authentic person. The war finally came to an end, and as the world rebuilt itself, so did I. I never forgot the young soldier I once was, and the experiences that shaped me, but I had found my true identity as Antoinette Harris, a woman who refused to be confined by societal expectations. My story became a symbol of resilience and hope, a testament to the power of love and acceptance, and a reminder that the journey to self-discovery is worth every step. In a world recovering from the scars of war, my words served as a beacon of light, encouraging others to embrace their true selves and find their own path to happiness and fulfillment. The corset felt incredibly tight, and I struggled to catch my breath. Colette assured me that it would get easier with time, but the pressure on my body was unsettling. As I stood there, gripping the bed for support, she fetched a pair of silk stockings and helped me slide them up my legs. The sensation of the smooth fabric against my skin was both foreign and strangely comforting. Now for the final touch, Colette said, holding up a dress made of soft pastel-colored fabric. It was a simple design, but to me, it represented a world I had never known. She helped me step into the dress and pulled it up over my corseted figure. As she zipped it up in the back, I couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions, confusion, fear, and even a hint of fascination. There, now you look quite the part, Colette said, stepping back to examine her work. 
I looked at myself in the mirror and was taken aback by the image that stared back at me. A young woman looking back with a mixture of uncertainty and acceptance. For a moment, I almost forgot the reasons for my transformation. I felt like a different person, someone free from the weight of war and societal expectations. It was as if the dress was a cocoon, shielding me from the harsh realities of the world outside. But then reality crashed back in as Colette's voice snapped me back to the present. Antoine, from now on, you will be Antoinette. Remember that. It is for your safety, I nodded, feeling a sense of resignation and resolve. If adopting this new identity was my only chance of survival, then so be it. Besides, Colette was willing to risk her own safety to help me. I owed her my gratitude and my trust. Colette led me down the stairs to the kitchen, where Marie had prepared a tray of food. She had already changed into a more practical outfit, one suitable for a servant. I couldn't help but feel grateful for her loyalty and support. As I sat down to eat, I struggled with my new identity. Antoinette. It felt strange to hear that name, but I knew I had to get used to it. Colette had taken the time to create this persona for me, and I needed to play my part convincingly. In the following days, Colette taught me how to move, speak, and act like a woman. She guided me through the intricacies of feminine mannerisms, and I found myself learning quickly. I had always been observant, and I absorbed these new behaviors like a sponge. The days turned into weeks, and I grew more accustomed to my life as Antoinette. I, be I became comfortable in my dresses, corsets, and silk stockings. The more I embraced this new persona, the less I felt like I was wearing a disguise, and the more I felt like I was becoming my true self. Colette and Marie continued to provide me with guidance and protection, ensuring that no one in the village suspected anything. They crafted a believable story that I was a distant cousin from a faraway town, seeking refuge from the war. During this time, I grew closer to Colette, who had become a confidant and dear friend. We shared our hopes, dreams, and fears with each other, and I found comfort in her presence. She understood my inner struggles better than anyone else, and her unwavering support gave me strength. As, as the war raged on, Colette and I often talked about our shared disdain for the senseless violence and the futility of war. We dreamed of a world where people could live freely and authentically, without fear of judgment or persecution. One evening, as the sun set on another day, Colette and I sat in the garden of Chateau Malarmes, holding hands and gazing at the stars above. The war seemed like a distant memory, and in that moment, we felt like two souls intertwined, finding solace in each other's company. Antoinette, Colette said softly, you've taught me so much about courage and resilience. You've shown me that it's possible to break free from the chains society places upon us. And I, I love you for it, her words caught me off guard, and my heart skipped a beat. I had never expected to hear such sentiments from her, and yet, it felt like the most natural thing in the world. In that moment, I realized that the love between us had transcended the boundaries of gender and societal norms. I love you too, Colette, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. You've given me a chance to be true to myself, and for that, I'll be eternally grateful. We leaned in and shared a tender kiss, sealing the bond that had formed between us. In that embrace, we found strength, love, and hope for a future that could be free from the shackles of war and prejudice. In the weeks that followed, Colette and I continued to stand by each other's side. Our love blossomed amidst the chaos of war, providing us with a sanctuary of peace and acceptance. As the war eventually came to an end, Colette and I decided to embark on a new journey together. We left the small town behind, bidding farewell to the Chateau Malarmes and the life we once knew. With, with the war behind us, we set our sights on a new beginning in a place where our love could flourish without fear or judgment. We traveled to a bustling city, where we could live our lives openly and freely. Colette pursued her passion for art, while I pursued my writing. Together, we championed the cause of acceptance and equality, using our experiences to shed light on the importance of embracing one's true self. In time, our story reached far beyond the boundaries of the city, inspiring countless others to embrace their identities and live authentically. We became advocates for love and acceptance, spreading a message of hope and understanding. As the years passed, Colette and I grew old together, surrounded by love, art, and the memories of the life we had lived. We had faced the horrors of war and the judgment of society, but we had also found love, acceptance, and a purpose greater than ourselves. Our legacy lived on, not just in the stories we shared but in the countless lives we touched. 
The war had been a crucible that had forged us into who we were meant to be, and together we had emerged as warriors of love, champions of acceptance and harbingers of a better world. And so, in the annals of history, the story of Antoine and Colette, or rather Antoinette and Colette, became an enduring testament to the power of love, resilience, and the pursuit of truth, no matter the obstacles that lay ahead. As Colette spoke, I felt a mix of emotions swirling inside me. On one hand, I was grateful for her kindness and determination to protect me. On the other hand, I couldn't shake the feeling of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of the change she was asking of me. Becoming Antoinette wasn't just about wearing dresses and makeup, it was about adopting an entirely new identity and way of life. I will try my best, I replied, my voice still feeling unfamiliar as a woman's, but I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about being a woman. I've never even seen a proper lady in the flesh, Colette smiled reassuringly. That's where I come in. I'll be your guide, and I promise to be patient with you. It won't be easy, but with time and practice, you'll learn to move and behave like a woman. It's a skill like any other, and I know you have the potential to be convincing. Over the next few days, Colette dedicated herself to teaching me the ways of womanhood. We worked on my posture, my gestures, and my speech. She corrected me gently when I slipped back into masculine habits and encouraged me to embrace my new identity fully. As, as the weeks passed, I gradually became more comfortable as Antoinette. I learned to walk gracefully in my high-heeled boots, to curtsy when appropriate, and to handle the intricacies of tea parties and social gatherings. Colette taught me about flower arrangements, the art of conversation, and even how to play the piano. Throughout this process, I discovered that there was a sense of liberation in embracing my feminine side. As Antoinette, I felt less burdened by the expectations of society and the traumatic memories of war. I found solace in the gentleness of womanhood and the understanding Colette provided. As time went on, Colette and I grew even closer. Our bond deepened beyond the realms of friendship, and a profound love blossomed between us. We were two souls who had found solace and acceptance in each other, transcending the boundaries of gender and societal norms. One day, as we sat together in the chateau's garden, Colette took my hands in hers and looked deeply into my eyes. Antoinette, she said softly, you have transformed not only in appearance but in spirit as well. You are no longer just a soldier hiding from the war, you are a woman who has found her true self. Her words resonated with me, and I realized that Colette was right. In the process of becoming Antoinette, I had undergone a profound transformation. I had shed the shell of masculinity that society had forced upon me, and in doing so, I had discovered a part of myself that had been hidden for so long. I owe it all to you, Colette, I replied, my heart full of gratitude and love. You've shown me a world of acceptance and understanding that I never thought possible. You've given me the chance to be true to myself. Colette smiled tenderly and leaned in to kiss me. In that moment, I knew that our love was not bound by the confines of gender or societal expectations. Our, our love was pure and true, and it gave us the strength to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the war eventually drew to a close, we made a decision to leave the small town behind and start anew in a different part of the world. Together, we traveled to the Antilles, the place that had become our sanctuary, and where our love could flourish without fear or judgment. In the beautiful surroundings of Martinique, we found a home filled with love and acceptance. Colette continued her art, and I pursued my writing, but we also dedicated ourselves to helping others. We used our experiences to advocate for love, tolerance, and understanding, spreading a message of hope to all who would listen. In time, our story became known far and wide, inspiring countless others to embrace their true selves and challenge the societal norms that constrained them. Our journey had been arduous, but it had also been transformative, and we were grateful for the chance to have made a difference in the lives of others. As the years passed, Colette and I grew old together, surrounded by the love and acceptance we had fought so hard to find. Our love story became a beacon of hope for those seeking to break free from the shackles of society and embrace their true identities. In the end, we knew that our legacy was not just about being Antoine and Colette or Antoinette and Colette, it was about the love and understanding that had united us. We had proven that love knows no boundaries, and when two souls find solace in each other, they can create a world where acceptance and compassion reign supreme. And so, as we looked back on our extraordinary journey, 
we knew that our love had transcended the horrors of war and the limitations of gender. We had become warriors of love, advocates of acceptance, and beacons of hope for all who sought to embrace their true selves and live authentically. As the days turned into weeks, I found myself torn between conflicting emotions. On one hand, I resented the fact that I was now living a life that felt alien to my true identity as a man. The corsets, the dresses, the delicate mannerisms, they all reminded me of the burden I carried, the price I paid for fleeing the war. A part of me still longed for the simplicity of life as a soldier, despite the horrors of the battlefield. Yet on the other hand, I couldn't help but find a sense of solace in this new existence. There was a certain tranquility in the elegance of womanhood, in the gentle rhythms of life at Chateau Malarmes. I embraced my training, learning to move with grace and decorum, to speak and act like a refined young lady. As I spent more time with Colette, my admiration and love for her grew stronger. She was not just my savior but also my guide, teaching me the art of womanhood with patience and understanding. Our bond transcended gender. We were kindred spirits, two souls seeking refuge from a world that had forced us into molds we didn't fit. During quiet moments, when we were alone together, Colette would share stories of her life before the war, of her travels to the French West Indies, and of her dreams for the future. I too began to open up about my past, my struggles, and the reasons that led me to escape the horrors of war. In, in each other's arms, we found comfort and solace. As the war raged on, we remained hidden in our chateau, nurturing our love and helping each other cope with the burden of our respective roles. We found ways to keep ourselves entertained, playing music, engaging in deep conversations, and finding solace in the beauty of nature surrounding us. As the months passed, my transformation into Antoinette became more complete. I perfected my French accent, my posture, and my gestures until they became second nature. I learned to take pride in my appearance, savoring the soft touch of silk against my skin and the swish of skirts as I moved. Although I still struggled with moments of doubt and uncertainty, I found strength in Colette's unwavering support and love. She had become more than a mentor. She was the compass that guided me through the stormy sea of identity and acceptance. One evening, as we sat in the chateau's garden, basking in the moon's gentle glow, I took Colette's hand in mine. Thank you for everything, I whispered, my heart filled with gratitude. You've given me a second chance at life, a chance to be true to myself. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm no longer afraid. As long as I have you by my side, I know I can face anything." Colette smiled, her eyes reflecting the same love and tenderness I felt in my heart. And I too am grateful for you, Antoinette, she replied. You've shown me a world of courage and resilience that I never knew existed. Together, we've defied the constraints of society and embraced our true selves. In each other, we found acceptance and love beyond the boundaries of gender. Our journey hasn't been easy but it has been worth every step. As the war eventually came to an end, we emerged from our sanctuary at Chateau Malarmes. The world had changed and so had we. Antoinette and Colette were no longer just names, they were the embodiment of the love and acceptance we had found in each other's arms. We returned to England, hand in hand, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Our story became a tale of resilience, of two souls who had defied the norms of their time and found happiness and acceptance in the most unexpected of circumstances. In the years that followed, we became advocates for love, understanding, and acceptance. We shared our experiences with others, encouraging them to embrace their true selves and defy the limitations imposed upon them by society. Our story touched the hearts of many, offering hope to those struggling with their identities. As time passed, the world became more accepting, and society began to change. We saw the gradual rise of movements advocating for LGBTQ rights, challenging the rigid gender norms of the past. Our love story became a symbol of the resilience of the human spirit and the power of love to transcend all boundaries. Together, Antoinette and Colette embarked on a new chapter of their lives, traveling the world and spreading their message of love and acceptance. They became a beacon of hope for those seeking refuge from a world that often failed to understand and embrace diversity. In the end, their love had conquered not only the challenges they faced as individuals, but also the prejudices and expectations of an entire society. They stood together as equals, embracing their true selves and inspiring others to do the same. And in doing so, they had achieved something far greater than they could have ever imagined. They had changed the world one heart at a time. 
Sergeant Major Daly turned his attention to me, concern etched on his face. I am sorry that this has occurred, miss, he said in English. Are you all right? Still shaken and in a state of shock, I continued speaking in French, trying to regain my composure. Merci, monsieur, je suis très bien. Si, n'est pas compris. Je dois partir. I thanked him for his intervention and assured him that I needed to leave. Daly nodded, understanding my discomfort. Of course, miss. You should return to your company immediately. These men won't bother you again. He accompanied me back to the carriage, ensuring my safety. As we rode back to Chateau Malarmes, I couldn't shake off the fear and vulnerability I had felt during the encounter with the drunken soldiers. It was a stark reminder that even in my new identity as Antoinette, I was not entirely safe from the dangers that lurked in the outside world. When we returned home, I confided in Colette about the incident, recounting every harrowing detail. She listened attentively, her expression a mix of concern and anger. I'm glad Sergeant Major Daly intervened, she said. He's a decent man and he won't let those soldiers cause any trouble for us. But it scared me, Colette, I admitted, my voice trembling. What if they had discovered my true identity? What if they had hurt me? I can't live in constant fear like this. Colette held me close, comforting me with her touch and words. I know, my dear, she whispered. It's a risk we have to take, being who we are, defying the norms of society. But we won't let fear control us. We'll be cautious, but we won't hide. Her words resonated deeply with me. Despite the fear that lingered, I knew Colette was right. Hiding away wasn't the solution. We couldn't let fear dictate our lives. I had to accept that being Antoinette meant embracing all aspects of life, the joys and the risks. In the days that followed, I found solace in Colette's comforting presence. She understood my anxieties and offered support whenever I needed it. Our relationship grew stronger as we faced the challenges together, finding strength in each other's love and understanding. When the dinner with the Monins approached, I felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. I wanted to make a good impression, to prove to them that I was a proper companion for Colette. I dressed carefully in the new dress Madame Arroué had tailored for me, feeling a sense of femininity and elegance wash over me. The dinner went smoothly, and I found myself enjoying the company of Madame Monin and her daughter Michelle. They were delightful, and it was evident that they had taken a liking to me as well. Colette beamed with pride, knowing that her protégé had charmed her family friends. As the weeks turned into months, I became more and more comfortable in my new identity as Antoinette. The fear and uncertainty that once plagued me began to fade, replaced by a newfound sense of confidence and acceptance. I no longer saw my transformation as a punishment, but as an opportunity to be true to myself and to embrace the person I had always been. Colette and I continued our work as advocates for love and acceptance. We used our story to inspire others, encouraging them to defy societal norms and to embrace their true selves, regardless of the challenges they faced. Eventually, the war ended, and the world began to heal from the scars of conflict. Society, too, started to change, becoming more accepting and understanding of diverse identities and orientations. As time passed, Colette and I grew older, but our love remained as strong as ever. We lived a fulfilling life together, always cherishing the journey that had brought us together, and the love that had transcended gender and expectations. Our legacy became more significant than we could have ever imagined. The story of Antoinette and Colette became a symbol of resilience, love, and the power of embracing one's true self. We had faced adversity and challenges, but we had triumphed, proving that love knows no boundaries and that the human spirit is capable of great strength and courage. As our story continued to inspire others, the world continued to evolve. The fight for equality and acceptance gained momentum, and societal norms continued to shift. People became more open-minded and compassionate, recognizing that the diversity of human experiences enriches us all. In the end, Antoinette and Colette's love story became a beacon of hope and understanding, a testament to the power of love to transcend all barriers. And as we looked back on our extraordinary journey, we knew that our love had not only changed our lives, but had contributed to changing the world for the better. My heart skipped a beat as Emile asked me to dance. I eagerly accepted, trying to hide the excitement that surged through me. The ballroom was filled with music, laughter, and swirling couples, but all I could focus on was Emile's hand on mine as we moved gracefully across the dance floor. 
As we danced, I found myself lost in the moment, feeling as though I had truly become the young woman I appeared to be. Emil was a wonderful dancer, and I felt safe and cherished in his arms. He complimented my gown and told me how lovely I looked, and I blushed at his kind words. During the evening, we danced several times, and each dance brought us closer together. We exchanged pleasant conversations about music, books, and life in general. I couldn't help but be charmed by his warm smile and genuine interest in getting to know me better. As the night drew to a close, Emile walked me to the carriage, and just before saying goodbye, he asked if he could call on me at Chateau Malarmes. I hesitated for a moment, knowing the complications of such a visit, but my heart overruled my cautious thoughts, and I agreed with a shy smile. In the following weeks, Emile and I spent more time together. He would visit the chateau, and we would walk in the gardens or sit by the fire, engaging in delightful conversations. Colette was always present during these visits, acting as a chaperone, ensuring that propriety was maintained. Emile seemed to be genuinely taken with me, and I found myself falling for him too. It was both exhilarating and terrifying to experience these feelings. I grappled with the complexities of my identity, unsure of how to navigate this burgeoning romance. As the days turned into months, Emile's leave came to an end, and he had to return to the front. We, we said our goodbyes with promises to write and stay in touch. I watched him ride off, a mix of emotions stirring within me. Colette comforted me, assuring me that our feelings were natural and that it was all right to allow myself to be vulnerable. Over the next year, Emile and I exchanged letters regularly. He told me about his experiences in the war, and I wrote to him about my life at Chateau Malarmes and our activities in the village. Our letters became a lifeline for both of us, a source of hope and connection in the midst of the harsh reality of war. During that time, I also continued to immerse myself in the role of Antoinette. I embraced my feminine identity, relishing in the freedom and peace it brought me. It no longer felt like a disguise but a part of who I was, a side of myself that I had suppressed for too long. In the, in the summer of 1918, news of the armistice brought relief and joy. The war was finally over, and Emile would be returning home. Colette and I eagerly awaited his arrival, excited to see him again, and hopeful for a future together. When Emile finally returned, we reunited with tears of happiness. He looked well, though war-weary, and I thanked the heavens that he had come back safely. The connection we had built through our letters only grew stronger in person. Emile's feelings for me hadn't wavered, and mine for him had blossomed into a profound love. We spent a few blissful weeks together, cherishing each moment and dreaming of a life together. However, our happiness was tempered by the knowledge that society still held strict views on relationships. A man couldn't marry another man, and so Emile and I faced a dilemma. We, ha we had to find a way to be together, to build a life that we both desired. Colette, ever the wise and resourceful woman, approached us with a solution. She proposed that we move to Paris, where we could live more freely. Paris was a city of artists, writers, and forward-thinking individuals, and we believed that there we could carve out a life together without judgment or fear. So, in the spring of 1919, Emile and I bid farewell to Chateau Malarmes and moved to Paris. We rented a small apartment and began our life together as a couple, our love no longer hidden behind letters or disguises. In Paris, we thrived in the artistic and bohemian atmosphere. Emile pursued his passion for painting, and I found work as a writer, using my experiences to craft stories of love and acceptance. Our, our life together was filled with love, adventure, and shared dreams. Over the years, our love story became an inspiration to many, a tale of overcoming societal norms and embracing true love. We found friends who accepted us for who we were, and our love was celebrated in the circle of artists and intellectuals we surrounded ourselves with. As time went on, the world continued to change. Society became more accepting, and the fight for LGBTQ rights gained momentum. We were fortunate to witness these changes, knowing that we had played a small part in paving the way for others. Emil and I lived a long and fulfilling life together, celebrating our love and the beauty of authenticity. Our story became a legend, one that transcended time and inspired generations to come. And so, the tale of Antoinette and Emile Lachail lives on, a testament to the power of love and the courage to be true to oneself, no matter the obstacles.
We hope that our story continues to inspire others to embrace their identities and to love fearlessly, just as we did all those years ago. As Emile's engagement to Michelle was announced, my heart sank with disappointment. I had allowed myself to get carried away with dreams of a life with him, only to have those hopes dashed. But as the days passed, I found solace in the fact that I had experienced a kind of love, even if it wasn't meant to be. I continued to live my life as Antoinette, embracing the femininity that had brought me such peace and happiness. The war still raged on, but in Paris, there was a sense of hope and renewal as the city began to rebuild itself after the devastation. My writing career flourished, and I found fulfillment in expressing my thoughts and experiences through my stories. I wrote about the challenges of love, the beauty of acceptance, and the resilience of the human spirit. My stories touched the hearts of many, and I became a respected and beloved writer in Parisian literary circles. Emile and Michelle's wedding was a grand affair, and I attended as a close friend of the Monin family. I watched as they exchanged vows, genuinely happy for their happiness. It was bittersweet knowing that Emile and I could never be together, but I had come to accept that life was filled with twists and turns, and sometimes things didn't work out as we hoped. As the years passed, Emile and Michelle welcomed children into their family, and I remained a part of their lives as their dear friend Antoinette. I cherished the role I played in their lives, knowing that my love and support were genuine, even if I couldn't have Emile as my partner. Life in Paris was a whirlwind of excitement and artistic exploration. I continued to immerse myself in the bohemian culture, surrounded by creative souls who celebrated individuality and uniqueness. Through it all, I felt a deep sense of belonging and contentment as Antoinette. The war eventually came to an end, and the world began to heal from the wounds of the past. Society started to shift its perspectives, and LGBTQ rights slowly gained recognition. While there were still challenges to face, I knew that progress was being made, and I felt proud to have played a part in paving the way for acceptance and understanding. As I grew older, I often wondered about the fate of my comrades from the front. I learned that Sergeant Major Daly had survived the war and retired from the military. I wrote to him, expressing my gratitude for the kindness he had shown me that day when he saved me from Corporal Milson's advances. Daly's reply was warm and filled with nostalgia for the past. He was living a quiet life in a small village, finding peace and contentment in his garden and with his family. Through the years, Colette remained by my side as a loyal and devoted friend. We shared the joys and sorrows of life, and she never ceased to support me in my journey as Antoinette. Our bond grew stronger and we became like sisters, confidants in this vast and ever-changing world. As time went on, I became an advocate for gender equality and acceptance. I used my platform as a writer to champion the rights of LGBTQ individuals, sharing my story as a testament to the power of love and authenticity. I often thought about the young man who had once been Antoine and how much he had changed since those days in the trenches. While I still carried the memories of war within me, I had found a sense of peace and purpose as Antoinette, embracing my true self and the woman I had become. In my later years, I continued to write, sharing my experiences and wisdom with younger generations. My life had been one of adventure, resilience, and love. I had defied society's expectations and found my place in the world, proving that one's identity and worth were not defined by societal norms. As I reflect on my journey, I realize that becoming Antoinette was not just a disguise to avoid danger, it was a transformation that allowed me to embrace my true self. My experiences as a woman taught me compassion, empathy, and the strength to overcome adversity. My legacy lives on in my writings and the stories I left behind. I hope that they continue to inspire others to embrace their authentic selves and find the courage to love fearlessly. The world had changed, and so had I, becoming the person I was always meant to be, Antoinette de Colbert, a woman who defied expectations and lived life on her own terms. And as I sit here, reflecting on my life's journey, I can't help but feel a sense of gratitude and contentment. I found love in unexpected places, and while Emile and I never had the chance to be together, I had experienced a kind of love that had shaped me profoundly. My story may have begun as a desperate attempt to escape war, but it blossomed into a tale of self-discovery, love, and the pursuit of authenticity. As the world continued to change and progress, I knew that my legacy would live on, 
not just as a soldier who had survived the front, but as a woman who had embraced her true self and dared to love, unapologetically and without reservations. As we embark on this extraordinary journey with Antoinette, we invite you to join us in celebrating the power of self-discovery, love, and the courage to defy societal norms. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more captivating stories like this one. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It means the world to us. Thank you for being a part of our community, and we look forward to sharing more compelling tales with you. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate, and embrace the beauty of being your authentic self.